distortions, glitched effects, RGB splitting, I don't know, there's a lot of names for this stuff. But in this video, we're gonna take a close look at creating a handful of awesome techniques that can be applied to you know, videos and promo type projects inside of After Effects. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. Welcome to our channel. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So what you see on the screen here is what we'll be creating in this video, of course. And I've broken down this video in a few really cool techniques so we can easily follow along and understand the concepts being applied. So I'm not gonna waste any more time gabbling about what we're creating. Let's jump into the tutorial. Let's get started. All right, here we are inside of After Effects and we got a lot of great work to do. Let's jump over to our tutorial composition. The only thing we have in here is just a pre-made title and our footage, which I just pre-composed as a placeholder so I can swap it out later. So we're gonna jump into our first distortion technique, which is gonna be able to split up the image in a very controlled manner. You can see our text here is split up and it's also gonna be affecting the background. So let's go ahead and show you how we can quickly do that. So here we are back in our tutorial composition and what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna use shape layers here. So we'll come here to the top and grab the rectangle tool. And all we're gonna do is draw out a rectangle like this. All right, nice rectangle. You can do any shape, but you know, for just for the tutorial, we're gonna be using rectangles. And we'll just move this over to the left here. Okay, awesome. Then where it says add, let's hit this button here and let's add a repeater. And we'll open up repeater and we will increase the number of copies just by a little bit and then open up the transform repeater one. And you'll go to position and there's the X position. Just move this out till we get some nice gaps here. All right, everything looks awesome, and I renamed this layer to map because we're gonna, we're gonna use this as a distortion layer. All right, so we're gonna turn off this layer just by hiding it, and then we'll go up to layer, new adjustment layer, and we'll rename this to uh, shape distort, and there's and that's fine. Then we'll go up to effect distort, and we're gonna grab displacement map, and under displacement map layer, we need to set this to our rectangle map. Now you can see that we're gonna be splitting apart our you know, our footage and our titles. And if you come here to max horizontal and max vertical displacement, you can see that we can really start to manipulate our image with our map and that's awesome. So one thing we can do is maybe increase the vertical map displacement so we can bring this in as like an in transition. And of course, make sure to check on wrap pixels around and maybe we'll set this to like, you know, 40 or something. And we'll come here and add a keyframe for the max vertical displacement and let's move forward by a few frames and let's just bring this down and maybe we can just go over a little bit more so now we'll have just this animation here like that and it's very subtle and we can make the last keyframe easy easy keyframe by hitting f9 on our keyboard nice and then let's just keep moving forward in our animation and we can you know continue to move it down or kind of get it back in place it's totally fine if we bring our shape distort layer right underneath our title you'll see that those you know, things are being repeated up there and that's fine. And you see how it distorts the background. So if you don't have to distort your text if you don't want to, but that's totally up to you how you want to roll uh, with this effect. So in our next technique, it's going to be very similar, but we're going to be able to create smaller distortions very easily. And you're going to be able to customize this very easy. So we'll come here into our tutorial composition again, and we'll go up to layer new solid. And we'll just call this uh, small distort uh, and click OK. Then we'll go up to effect noise and grain and we're gonna grab fractal noise and we'll set the fractal type to max and we'll set the noise type to block all right and we'll increase the contrast bring down the brightness so we can just start limiting how limiting how many you know squares are in here and we have a lot of capability here so you know we can keep it out squares which i'm going to do that for this tutorial but we go to transform properties we can scale this down so we have even more we can raise it up so they get bigger um, and you can also uncheck uniform scaling and you can increase the width if you want to do that I'm gonna just keep it at a square so you can really start creating unique lines uh, With this easy effect. I'm gonna bring down the scale by a little bit. Awesome And I'm gonna all click the stopwatch for evolution and I want to type in time asterisk 40 and Boom and when we're done here, I'm going to grab our layer go to layer pre-compose and we'll just call this uh, small distort map and move all attributes into new composition click ok awesome and we'll turn off this layer go back up to layer new adjustment layer and we'll go back to effect distort and we'll grab displacement map and we'll set this layer to that small distort, uh, distort map and let's put this layer like underneath our title this time so we're only affecting the background we increase our displacement you can see that we can really create some distortions here make sure you wrap pixels around and yeah, you know, you can really get crazy with this. So what we can do is all click stopwatch for the horizontal displacement. We'll type in time asterisk 50. 
awesome. And then we can all click the stopwatch for vertical displacement. And we'll type in wiggle open parenthesis. And we'll type in two comma 100 close parenthesis. And just so we can make our original title, it's a little bit easier to read. I'm going to go to that last keyframe on our other, you know, distort layer. And just make sure those are kind of lined up just so we can see what we're reading here. Awesome. So we're going to get some really cool distortion as long as you can read your text that's really what's important if you have text on this sort of thing okay so one thing you may have noticed is that we get all these weird distortions around the edges and it's up to you if you want to have it this intense but one thing we do to help minimize this is we go up to layer new null object and we'll grab all of our layers here and let's parent this to the null object and we'll hit asterisk keyboard for scale we'll add a keyframe for it and we can just zoom in just by a little bit and we'll move this keyframe forward and I'm just going to scale in even more. So this time we'll just be kind of zooming out of our animation and you know, it makes it look really, you know, kind of cleans things up. And also we can go into say our placeholder layer and we can ask for keyboard for scale, add a keyframe for this and move to the end of our animation and we can scale inwards. And this way we'll be creating a nice parallax animation. So essentially we're zooming out of our composition and zooming into the background. So it helps kind of create a very subtle parallax animation and we'll add on to this a little bit later. But before we move forward into tricking out our composition, I want to move into our third and final distortion technique, which is just quickly adding a subtle RGB effect. Very easy to do this, so let's do it. So what we'll do here is grab all of our layers, go up to layer pre-compose, and I'll just call this all cut, and that's fine. Then what we'll do is go to effect channel, and we're gonna grab shift channels. And we'll turn off the green channel, turn off the blue channel, and we'll go up to edit, duplicate so this layer is duplicated then we'll turn off the red channel turn on the green channel duplicate it again turn off the green channel and turn on the blue channel and we'll grab the two top layers here toggle switch to the modes until you see the blend modes and set this to screen so the two top layers need to be set to screen and then we can hit PR keyboard for position on one of the layers and you see we can kind of offset these and you get some RGB splitting so what we can do here is all click the stopwatch for position type in wiggle open parenthesis 2 comma 5 close parenthesis so there'll be very subtle distortions there and we can copy that expression go to our second layer and we'll all click it paste that expression in there so we don't have to retype it so now bam so we have this very subtle rgb distortion added into our composition and it looks great and before we move further into our tutorial i want to give a quick shout out to some of the best templates that i use so for example when you're working on you know these type of promo or video type projects where you're going to work with multiple slides. One tool that I really like to use is called the Handy Seamless Transitions Pack, which has like 2000 transitions with its own interface right here inside of After Effects. And within this Transitions Pack, there's amazing categories from distortions, glitches, lens zooms, camera movements, uh, and so much more. And you can obviously preview every transition before you apply it. So for example, if I have a transition right here that I like, I can just click on it. And with our transition applied within a click of a button, we've been able to tie these two uh, compositions together really easily. And one of my favorite tools when I'm working on extended video projects with multiple compositions. And there's several other amazing templates I like to use inside of After Effects. I even have my own page dedicated to my favorite After Effects templates. So if you want to check out the handy seamless transitions pack and also some of my favorite templates i will drop those links in the video description so we'll come back into our all tut composition and one thing i would like to add to this is a little bit of camera shake just to help loosen this up so let's go to layer new adjustment layer and we'll just call this effects and we'll go up to effect stylize and we're gonna grab motion tile and we're gonna all click the stopwatch for tile center and i'll type in wiggle open parenthesis one comma 40 close parenthesis and i'm going to check on mirror edges and this kind of helps with our distortion effect just you know kind of messes up the composition a little bit looks cool let's go to effect distort and let's add optus compensation and let's increase this to maybe like you know 70 check on reverse lens distortion and let's come here to begin of our timeline and maybe increase it by a little bit more let's add a keyframe for field of view move forward just by a little bit set this down to zero and we'll come here towards the end and we can just uh, hit U on keyboard to bring up the keyframes, add a keyframe at zero there, move forward and we can just have this come towards us. And that looks really cool. And then let's also go to effect blur and sharpen and let's add a directional blur. And let's add a keyframe for blur length and set U on keyboard to bring up the keyframes and let's increase the blur length by like a little bit here, maybe like 18. And we'll come here forward 
to our ending uh, keyframes here, add a keyframe there, and let's increase the blur length a little bit more to you know that point. And let's select all the inner keyframes, and let's hit F9 on our keyboard to make them easy ease keyframes. And we can really start to pull this composition together with some you know third party assets. So maybe you can find like a texture. You can find like a texture, or I'm gonna use a third party particle pack right here. Uh, I'll link this in the description. It's from my favorite kit called Cine Punch. And Cine Punch has over like 10,000 elements, and it's just one out of the 10,000. But I'm gonna bring this into here, and I'm just gonna set this blend mode to the screen, scale it down. And I'm not going to parent it to our null object, so it'll just be there. And those particles are just there. And, you know, it looks really cool. It just adds you know, new layer of depth to our composition. It's awesome. For a little bit more fun, and just for a little bit more fun, I'm going to go ahead and create another adjustment layer. And I'm going to effect simulation, and I'm going to grab CC rainfall. And this is a cool little effect for the scene. It's not needed or anything like that. I'm going to bring this layer underneath our distortions as well. And so far, this is what we have, and it looks really good. We have a lot of things coming together with our nice distortion and just all these elements just bring everything together. Come here into our main composition where we did our RGB effect, and this is obviously where you're going to render your project from. But I'm going to go ahead and create another adjustment layer. And this one will go to Effect, Noise and Grain, and I'm going to add Noise. And I'm going to set this up to like 12%. And this is a nice you know, distortion effect that we can add, and you know, I think 12% is a nice touch. And then I'm also going to effect distort and I'm going to grab CC lens and this effect is really awesome. So I'm going to bring the convergence down to zero. So I'm just going to type that in there and we'll come here to begin our timeline. We'll add a keyframe for convergence and I'm also going to increase the size up to like 100. And we'll move and we'll hit U on keyboard to bring up the keyframes. We'll set the convergence keyframe forward in time and then we can increase the convergence and nice. So maybe we'll go like to 80 and then we'll come here to the end. We'll add a keyframe for convergence and we'll just kind of increase it so we can take this even further. And then of course make the two inward keyframes easy ease keyframes by hitting F9 on your keyboard. And just to finish off everything, let's make sure we add motion blur to all of our layers, clicking on at the top, go back into the other composition and make sure they're all enabled for motion blur. So when we have all our effects combined, here's what we have and it just looks really awesome. All these small effects combined to make it look like a big piece of work a lot of you know distortion type elements in here uh, specifically the main three ones are making the big difference but all the other small effects also help make a difference and help stylize what we've created so those are a few kind of cool distortion type glitch effects that you can apply to your videos inside of after effects some really cool concepts i hope you enjoyed it and if you're new here be sure to hit that subscribe button because we post multiple post-production tutorials every single week right here on the channel you can also hit me up on my social media networks those links are in the video description and always be creating.